Okay. Wow, a lot of people stayed, that's good. So this talk has had various names. Uh, originally it was gonna be an open stage talk and it's kind of changed shape to come here. Um, I have some slides prepared, I have a few ideas I'd like to share with you, but mainly I would like to keep time to involve all of you in uh, hearing back from you what you're doing. And I'm absolutely horrible at keeping track of time. So Ted, if you can make sure, are you staying? Yeah, if you can make sure that there's a chunk of time left at the end, uh, give me a five minute warning, okay. Oh, but I need something like 20 minutes to make sure that we have time to get into discussion, uh, depending on the shape of it. Hi, Michael. All right, um, before I start, I would just like to hear uh, back from people in the room. How many of you have actually been actively involved in an open source project? Hands, please. Okay. How many of those were Apache projects? Smaller number than usual. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little bit of my own background before I start the talk. Um, I am actually not a computer scientist. I'm not a data scientist. I'm not a computer engineer. And in fact, I don't even play one on television. My original training is technical. Uh, my background was as a research biochemist and molecular biologist. So this has been a real interesting uh, uh, switch to step into this community. Uh, I do a fair amount of uh, writing about uh, big data projects and open source projects. And the open source projects that I'm familiar with are Apache Foundation projects. And they have their own style. Certainly there are many other open source projects that are, are shaped differently than this. I don't have a lot of experience with those, so I'll want to hear back from you. And the examples that I'll be giving you in terms of the, the tips that I have to offer are really based on the open source uh, Apache projects that, uh, that I've been involved with. So let's get started. So, uh, I've heard a lot of people think that the most important thing in any kind of open source computer project is the code, the developers and writing the code. The code itself is what really matters. But in fact, um, for myself, um, I actually do too. If you don't have a project and you don't have computer codes, you don't have a project. So it is the most important thing. But it's certainly not the only thing. And what we want to look at is, without a strong community around the project, the code itself may not have the life and, and energy that you want, it may not reach uh, the users that you want, and it may not take the shape that you want if you're involved in the project. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit at the beginning from the point of view of people who are basically the core developers in a project, what their needs are and you know, what makes it a strong project for them, and then what can get wrapped around that to make it a better project and what people who are not the core developers can do, whether they're developers, whether they're coders or non-coders, what they can do to be involved in a project in order to make it a stronger project. So if the community is that important, why don't all open source projects have a really strong community? And many of them do, and you certainly see that here at Buzzwords, but some of them don't. And that's one of the things we want to look at. One reason is that some projects are not really intended to be uh, a big community project. Uh, it may be a very special or academic idea that somebody just wants the freedom to work on. They'd like to share that a little bit with the public, you know, get some good feedback on it. And they're not trying to build a huge project that goes out and, and affects a lot of people. And those are really cool, and, then, and some of those have an, an unexpected uh, large impact anyway. But I'm less familiar with those projects, so those aren't the kind of projects I'm going to be talking about today. I'm mostly going to talk to you about the projects, as I said, some of these Apache projects, um, that are started and run with the intention of involving a large community and ultimately having a project that goes out and gets used by a lot of people. So, uh, what is it like to actually work on an uh, open source project? Uh, you get involved with a lot of very bright people. Uh, the people are living in different places and each have a lot of good ideas and generally they don't have enough time to actually carry out the project, so that's always a challenge. Uh, so in a lot of ways, it's like herding cats. You have a lot of people, different ideas, different places. Uh, how do you get them coordinated? How do you get them doing the right thing? And so I'll just remind you what herding cats is like, and if you have a chance to look up this video later, uh, you'll have a lot of fun with it. So, 
what actually fuels an open source project? What's make, what makes people want to jump in and spend their time and energy doing this? And I think the answer is pretty clear. It's generally pizza. Okay. But seriously, what is it really that fuels the open source projects? And I, my observation is it's also beer. So, looking at Apache Foundation, this is a quote from the Apache Foundation uh, main page. Uh, an open source project under their umbrella is not simply uh, the code, it's not simply the, the development of the software itself, but it's actually a community of developers and of users. And I think certainly among a bunch of people who are very technical, who are the ones who are really at the, at the center or the core of developing a project, it's sometimes easy to forget that the users are also a part of that community and a part of the project, especially if you're developing a project that you want to have legs and really go out and have a large impact. I'm sorry, I'm staring at this to remember what is on here, but I've done something odd with my monitor and I actually can't see what slides I'm displaying, so I keep staring up here. Um, really can think of the project if, as having different phases. Uh, in the early stages of development, uh, the challenges are getting people involved, getting enough people involved, getting the right people involved, shaping the project and moving it forward to maturity. Um, but then again, for these projects where people really do want to have a lot of other people involved, is actually deploying the project, having it out there and being used. And I think for some people at the point that the final release is made, Sometimes their interest in the project sort of lags off, or indeed the time they may have in, in, in to be involved in it. But in a way, it's a really interesting part of a phase of the project, because now you get to see what can be done with it, who's using it, and, and how that can come back to the de development of the project itself. So those two phases are, are uh, interwoven. And one of the challenges throughout any of these open source projects is how do you keep people's involvement, their energy, their, their time and their willingness to stick with the project over time, or indeed then to, to bring in new people as some people really are going to leave the project so that the project has longevity. And that's a problem or a challenge during the development phase, and it's also a challenge after it's really being actively uh, used. Uh, probably you're familiar with a lot of the uh, Apache Foundation projects. I didn't put drill up here, but that's a new project and also one that uh, I've been interested in. These are some of the ones that, uh, that I know a little bit about or, or have been tracking myself or tried to, to volunteer some time to help out. So I'd just like to take a second now and say, several of you raised your hands at the beginning to say what projects you're involved in. I would like to hear back from you. I'll start with you, Sebastian, because I know a few of the projects you're involved in. And Stratosphere, right? <laughs> no, but I'm not Apache Indian. So he said he's involved in the Apache uh, Mahout, and although he calls it Mahout, and since he's a committer and I'm not, I guess I'll call it Mahout for the moment too. Uh, project Giraffe, and a new project, Stratosphere, which is not uh, an Apache project. And you're involved as a committer in all of this, right? A uh, committer okay. and PMC member. A uh, committer and PC member. Okay, who else? Open source. I saw more hands in this. Suddenly, everybody got shy. Hi, Michael. Uh, mainly Apache Drill. So that was Apache Drill. And Michael, what you do development and you out and talk to people about drill? Um, mostly HBase and a bit of Hadoop and Hive, but only contributing, not committer. I'm up here with an echo. I heard HBase, and what was the rest of it? Uh, Hadoop and Hive. Hadoop and Hive, excellent. But not a committer, only contributing. Yeah, I was going to say, thank you. Sebastian says, don't say only, and I agree with that. What is your name? Somebody back here? Hi, my, my name is Günther. I'm involved in a project um, uh, who, is, um, who is providing um, uh, discovery solution for for libraries. It's called Viewfind. 
Can uh, I'm in a funny echo spot. Can you hear that? View, view find. View find. View find. And are you a, a developer, a committer on those? Oh, excellent. People in the back there, anyone? Well, and, and there's a lady here on the front that, that you may know. Uh, <laughs> would you stand up for a minute? So this is Isabel Drost, and she's part of the reason that all of us are here. So in a way, she's involved in every open source project in, in, uh, in Buzzwords, because she's uh, one of the founders of Buzzwords, but she's also a founder and, and committer for the uh, Apache Mahout. Yeah? Uh, ask Philip, talk about what he contributes here. You're seeing him. OK. Yeah, my name is Philip. Hi. Uh, and I'm contributing to this conference in a way that is very non-technical, so I'm just providing images. So I guess that is another approach on how to contribute to a community. And, and a big approach, a good, very good contribution. Okay, let's move on. So looking from the point of view, if our focus is, what do the core developers need? They're trying to build a code, they want it to be good, they want it to be strong, they need a lot of extra help and hands with that. So as if we think of ourselves now, some of you are those people, but pretend you're not. Uh, if you look from the other point of view, for everybody out there, whether they're a coder or a non-coder, uh, the question comes, what could the rest of us do that helps support the, the core development part of the project? So what can we actually do? And these are some of the uh, thoughts that I had about it. Um, People who have uh, the skills can review patches. Um, people who have enough technical knowledge and some good writing skills can start to write documentation. Uh, probably not the most fun thing in the world, but it's an incredibly important part of a project. Uh, people can uh, provide use cases and test out use cases as the project's being developed and give feedback to the project. Uh, they can refer other engineers. So maybe they don't have exactly the right skill set for the project, or maybe they do, but they don't have the time to be involved. But if they take an interest in a project, keep track of what's going on, and as they run into uh, colleagues who may be able to contribute, uh, giving referrals can be a really great help to the core development. And they can get the word out about the project itself through a variety of different ways. Uh, one of the things that I found is really useful, as people start to express an interest in an open source project, uh, one of the first things that I suggest, uh, if it's uh, in early stages of development, like Apache Drill, that they consider subscribing to the mailing list for the developer mailing list. If it's a more mature project, like Apache Mahout and some of the other projects, I suggest that they go to the developer side if that's what they're interested in, or, or in some of those projects, there's more activity actually on the user side, because that's you know, where the project is at that point. But it finally occurred to me, and after trying this myself, subscribing to several of these projects to see what's going on, for me, my email box was just completely overwhelmed by the stream of emails coming in relative to the project, most of which, because of my background, are too technical for me to get a lot of use out of. I'm not looking at it every day. I'm not acting on it every day. And I found it a little bit overwhelming. So I thought, wow, I've been in, in, advising people to do this, and in fact, I'm not sure I want to do it myself. So what I do instead, and I'll take the Apache Drill project as a good example, every several days, I look at the development mailing list. That's a new project, so right now it's the developer list that's active. The user list has you know, almost nothing on it yet. But instead of subscribing to that list, although I think I am still subscribed, but I hide everything, uh, I just jump onto the website, I go on to the thread for that month, jump back and forth from one month to another, and it's a wonderful way to be able to take just a few minutes, scan down the list of what the conversational topics are, look over and see who's involved, and you immediately get a sense of where the project's going. And if there's a piece of that that's of particular interest to you, or again, if you have the, the coding skills and want to get involved, you can see if there's something that you want to jump in on. And so I think it's a really good way to keep track of a project, or indeed multiple projects, uh, without being overwhelmed by them. Uh, various ways of getting uh, the word out to different people and getting a conversation going, uh, joining the conversation yourself, or at least watching it go by. Uh, the social media uh, that I enjoy using is uh, Twitter. 
which I came into accidentally because I was uh, going over to have dinner at the house of, of Michael Bush, who uh, works at Twitter and is a friend. And I thought, wow, I'm, I'm going over to see Michael again, and I've never even looked at Twitter, so I'll just sign up this little account for fun, and you know, maybe I'll write poetry or send jokes or something. But I also started commenting on what was happening with Mahout and some of the other open source projects and some other big data involvement uh, with the, the uh, company called MapR and the talks that were being given. And suddenly that took over my Twitter account. And so that's pretty much what I use it for at this point. And it's been a lot of fun. So I recommend whatever social media that you like. It's a nice way to keep, it's a different style of seeing what's going on with the project than with actually following the mailing list itself. OK, so as core developers, we've looked at what other people can do uh, to help that project. And so the next question comes, what can the developers themselves do to help the project go forward? And a lot of overlap. But probably, you've probably all heard this, but I think it is really important, especially as the experts on the project and the people who really have the leadership and the voice. It's important to play nice. It doesn't mean you don't uh, express strong opinions, and it doesn't mean that you take in everybody's idea and that every piece of code anybody offers you is, is the right code or good code for the project. But how you deal with those situations really makes a big difference in people's enthusiasm to join it and keep going. And never, never, on a mailing list especially, or in, in person, but especially not on a mailing list, never be rude. And one tip I can give you is that email isn't the same as direct communication as useful as it is. A lot of these projects are being done by people who are in very different parts of the world. Uh, they have to rely on things like email to keep the, the communication going. And with email, you don't have the nuance. Uh, you don't see a person's uh, expression. You don't know if they're being slightly sarcastic or funny or serious, or indeed they intended to be rude. So just be a little careful about those communications if you're one of the people actively involved in these projects, and I think it makes things go much better. Uh, a lot of the rest of this is pretty obvious, but the second one is, second and third points here. It's really important if you have the opportunity, especially at, at a venue like this, to, to pair up the experience of working on a project uh, remotely through Google Hangout, through WebEx, through uh, mailing list discussions. But when you have the opportunity to have different people who are on the same project in the same place, take that opportunity. And so I'll give you the example of one that I know of. On the Apache Mahout project, they're about to come out with a new release. And a lot of the people came here one day earlier than Buzzwords, took advantage of the fact that there would be a number of the core developers uh, here in Berlin at the same time. And that's one of the, the beauties of a, of a conference like Buzzwords. It does bring in so many people who are at the heart of these projects together. And they spent an enormous number of hours over the weekend and just a huge flurry of activity, uh, squashing bugs left and right and getting the project ready to go. And obviously, they've been doing that anyway, but it is very different to have all of those people in the room together. It's just a different kind of interaction. So I think pairing that up is, is a very powerful thing. Having said how powerful it is to have those meetings face to face when you have the opportunity is, if you're involved in that, do keep in mind it's important then to take the time to go back and report it back online for the people who weren't in the room at the time. It's good for them to hear what those discussions were and not just to see the end result. Uh, I think the rest of this is pretty obvious, but uh, back to the idea of documentation. It takes time and energy to have to sit down with the person who's doing the documentation, especially if they're not as technically expert as you are, uh, and that's probably in some ways less appealing than just working on the core of the project. But the end result is an important impact on the project. If you want good documentation, if you want people to understand your project and be able to use it, that time that you invest working with the people who are willing to give their time to do documentation makes a big difference. And the alternative is you're stuck with writing all of that yourself, and that's probably also not that appealing. So taking the time for that pays off in the long run. What can we do on the user side to build the user side of the community? Again, a lot of overlap with the things that we just said. They're not completely separated, but now the project is in a different kind of uh, phase, a different uh, space. And uh, as the public, or indeed as core developers on one project, you may be the users of a different project. And so one of the best things you can do to help a project is to actually use its product. Uh, use it 
but don't just use it, use it and get the information back to the people in the project so they know how things are going, they know what needs to be changed or not, and also get the, the information out to other people who might want to use this. It's amazing how many people really don't know about the projects, get very excited when they do hear about it, and that can make a big difference in, also goes back to the development itself. I give you a, so what can we do to help? This is a great example. Back in I, December, I think it was, of this year, uh, the Apache Mahout project got a huge shot in the arm because there was a very well-publicized article uh, in Wired about how the company Overstock.com had saved millions of dollars by making a, uh, a recommender that involved a Mahout recommender. Uh, one of the people who put the, the, I started to say the bug in there, I guess you don't say that in computer terms. The, the person who helped plant that idea of how they might do that is sitting here with his legs propped up, Ted Dunning. Uh, and because it ended up, I mean, the project happened and that was great, and it was great for Overstock.com. But because that Wired article appeared, it really called attention to Mahout for a lot of other people. Now, I watch what happens uh, on, basically in social media via Twitter. Uh, sometimes in the comments I'm making about big data, not just about the Mahout project, uh, I'll be reporting somebody's blog post or uh, a link to a meeting site or something like that, and, uh, and say what hashtags would be useful for that particular post. And say two years ago, a year and a half ago, I would be saying something about this topic in general, and I would try the hashtag analytics, and there would be enough hits. It got to the point, if you mentioned uh, the hashtag Hadoop, there were so many hits that you couldn't do anything with it, so that wasn't really useful. And I could put in the hashtag machine learning, and there was nothing. So it wasn't very helpful, because nobody was searching for that. Data mining, yes, not machine learning. After this article came out, I can put in the hashtag machine learning, and you get a lot of <laughs> people who are tweeting about that. So you just start to see that the public awareness you know, begins to change. There have been a lot of people requesting talks. I help uh, uh, MAPR uh, line up some of their speakers with meetups, and a lot of people are asking for talks on Mahout. So suddenly there's just this renewed interest in the project. Uh, it's, it's really been exciting to see that effect, and that's getting fed back into uh, development. Uh, he very kindly held up the sign for 10 minutes, and so I don't think I got Ted's uh, signal for 20 minutes. So let's just race through the rest of this. Uh, companies are part of the users. What can they provide? Uh, obviously, in encourage people to be involved in projects. They can also provide venue uh, where people can have meetups to discuss the project or have hackathons, a very important aspect of these projects. And they can also uh, provide the beer and pizza, key aspect. Uh, what can you do to help? Again, a lot of overlap with the sorts of things we've already talked about. This is a reminder that we want to give away a few books here. So we're going to have a quick little contest. Uh, who out here would not like to have a copy of Mahout in Action? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. So if you don't want a copy, my next question is, did you get one of these little cards that was handed out at the beginning that says MAPR on it? Okay, good, because if you did, give it away. All right, so the reason you have a card that says MAPR on it is that the company MAPR Technologies very kindly offered to donate these books uh, to the talk today, so we say thank you to MAPR Technologies for doing that. And we're gonna start off with, look at your little card, and if you see a little bunny sketched in on the front and you would like a Mahout book, then stand up and show me your card. All right, would you like a Mahout book? All right, so Ted, give him a Mahout book with a bunny on it. It's got a bunny on it because I happen to like rabbits, and so that's my little contribution here. <laughs> okay, yeah, I have a little, little bunny on my badge. All right. Uh, and we managed to get, I think, two signatures in the book. Robin and Neil, who is a, uh, works at Google and is another uh, Mahout in Action author, is here at the conference. But I never managed to get Ted, Robin, myself, and the books in the same room at the same time. So if you bump into Robin during the meeting, you can get his signature. Uh, we've ever actually had all four authors of the book uh, in the same place. We thought Sean was coming to Buzzwords, and he had a last-minute conflict. OK, next one. Does anybody have a star? And would you like a book? Does anybody have uh, the hashtag uh, for buzzwords, BeBuzz, written on their card? 
There you go, Ted, this way. Does anybody have a thing that was supposed to look like a moon and stars, but actually looks like a banana with flies around it? <laughs> there he is, over there. He would like a book. And then I have a question. Who in here has a suggestion to make about what you would like to see people do that would make open source be stronger? Can anybody make a suggestion? Any suggestion? Get a good domain name. Get a good domain name for the website. It says get a good do domain name for yeah, a which, website to usually, drive traffic. It's quite cheap, but you have to and, come up with a good name. And he also volunteered to hand out those cards, so he gets a book, <laughs> which gives greater incentive here. Yes. And it would be great if people would document more and if people would be encouraged to document their patches and things more. And a book, please. That encouragement is a big deal there. It, it really, really helps people. Thank you all for participating in this. I really appreciate it. Uh, good luck to you in whatever projects you're involved in. And uh, the best recommendation I have to keep really in touch with what's going on in the open source community is come back to Buzzwords 2014. It's absolutely the best conference in this space. Some of the best people you'll ever meet. Uh, this is the third year I've been able to be here, and the first year I've participated directly in the conference, and I think it's a fabulous thing. So good luck to all of you, and thank you for coming. <laughs>